For today's Monday makeup lesson, I want to show you how to apply a full face of makeup using just one brush. In our previous video, I showed you how to create an eye makeup look using just your fingertips and no brushes. And I asked for you guys to vote over on the community page what you would like to see next. And this video, luckily for me, seemed to be voted for the most. This is a full face using just one brush. So we're talking foundation, concealer, blush, contour, highlight, basically everything that you apply on your face. I also have lots of tips and tricks along the way on how to hold your brushes and get the best out of your brushes as well. So let's get started. So the brush that I picked for this is a round flat topped brush. So this has a round shape, but then it's cut straight across. This is the Blank Chemist Cosmetics F20. I am a brand ambassador and I do have a discount code below if you want to check it out. But the F20 is perfect for this because it's so versatile. Because we're only going to be using one brush for the entire application, we need to adjust how we're holding and using the brush for each product. So I want to start by going through the best and worst ways to hold your brushes. For beginners, I always recommend just picking up the brush as if you are holding a marker or a pen because this is the most comfortable. It's something that you're already used to doing. One thing that I see some beginners using is all of their fingers kind of in this long motion across the brush handle. What this does is it actually puts a massive strain on your hand, particularly if your pinky is involved. If your pinky is coming into contact with your brush, you are going to end up with hand cramps. So it's best to not involve your pinky whatsoever. So here we have position one. This is the pen shape. We have our thumb, our index finger on top, and then it's resting against our middle finger. But then you can also do position number two, which is actually bringing two fingers on the top and I like to refer to this as the bunny because it kind of looks like bunny ears on the top of the brush. This means that we are resting against our ring finger and we have two fingers on top and we're still using our thumb on the edge. Now when it comes to actually where the brush is sitting onto the hand, you have the well shape. This is sitting right in the little well because if you think of it, it kind of looks like a well or maybe I've just been playing too much Zelda, but it looks like a little well and you're basically going to hold the brush in either the bunny or the pen and rest it in this area. And then similar to the well, we have the wall. So this is basically where it's not resting backwards, it's sitting up against the wall of the index finger. And again, our pinky is not involved in the situation. Our pinky is only there for either tucking it in for support or letting it out if we want a little bit more balance. And then the next important step is how it comes into contact with the face itself. I don't want you to push the brush too much on the face. What I want you to do is use all of the bristles focusing in one area and doing this tapping motion. This is what I refer to as the woodpecker. So you're always working in kind of a 90 degree angle across the face. So now taking everything that we've learned, we're going to add it into more of a practical application and we're going to start off with foundation. Now the best way to actually pick up your foundation is to pump it either onto a palette or the back of your hand and make sure that you spread it out so it's not too clumpy. You never want to pump the foundation onto the brush itself. It will end up clogging it and the brush will not work for you. So just apply a little bit onto a palette or the back of your hand, spread it out, and then pick it up using the woodpecker motion, dipping it into the product. And you should end up with a result that looks like this. If it doesn't look like this, then you're using too much and you want to spread it out a little bit more and just very gently tap it in. As you can see, we just have little droplets of the foundation on all of the tips of these bristles. This is going to give us the best finish, trust me. Each one of these dots is going to combine to create a kind of photograph or that perfect airbrush finish. If you ever zoomed into an airbrush photo, you will see that it's made up of all of these dots over and over and over again to create that flawless image. That's what this is going to do, but we're going to use a brush to do it. So I'm holding the brush in the pen position, going against the wall of my finger, and we're using the woodpecker, bouncing this off and on the skin. You're going to repeat this working all over your face and you're going to get the most beautiful, flawless finish and it's not going to feel really heavy. That's the great thing about this. Because we're just basically applying pigment over and over and over again, you're not going to feel like you're wearing a full heavy face, but you're going to have full amazing coverage. 
once I've applied the coverage, I then want to very softly start to buff this in. And the way to do that is to actually use the open position. So I use the closed position using my ring and my pinky really close to my hand. This gave me a lot more pressure as I was using the woodpecker motion. And then as I want to kind of softly blend and buff it in a little bit more, not picking up any more product, I then just brought my fingers into a more open position. This just softens the pressure and means I'm gonna get much more of a bouncier, airier feel to my skin. And then you should end up with something that looks like this. And it felt like I wasn't wearing anything on my face. It just feels so lightweight, so airy. I don't know if the woodpecker motion just basically bounces air onto your face, but it really feels so lightweight. I'm just gonna repeat this onto the other side of my face and then we're gonna move on to concealer. Now, obviously, because we have such a large brush, we're not gonna be able to get right into the inner corner of the eyes or the outer corner. So that's why it's best just to use either your fingertips to apply it or just use the little applicator that it comes with. And your fingertips are actually great for blending out concealer because it has that warmth, so it has that creaminess, and then it just effortlessly blends. However, you can use this brush if you would like as well. You just need to adjust it ever so slightly. So I'm using the pen position, holding up against the wall, and I have my fingers sprayed in the open position. This is just gonna make sure that I'm not being too clumpy or too hard, and I can get into the inner corner and underneath the eyes. Now in between each application, I like to just take a cloth and just buff off any excess moisture. And this is actually where I got a really bad hand cramp because I've actually been trying out all of the different ways to hold brushes. I ended up causing myself to get a hand cramp and I do have a chronic illness that causes a lot of pain in my hands. So this is why it's really important to make sure that we're giving our hands the most support that they can have and we're using the brush in the best possible way to prevent this amount of pain because this was very painful. <laughs> But yes, as I was saying, you do want to take your brush in between each application and just buff it off onto a clean tissue just to remove any excess product before moving on to the next step. Now for the next step, I'm going to pick up a little bit of powder. That's why I wanted to remove most of the excess moisture. And we're still gonna use the woodpecker motion. However, I'm going to hold the brush a little further down on the handle. The further you hold the handle, the less pressure you're going to end up getting. And I'm also using this in the pen wall open hand motion. This is gonna make sure that I have a lot more of a softer feel because we only want a very sheer amount of powder across the skin and just set everything that we've already applied. I'm then gonna take the brush and I'm going to apply my contour. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll one side of the brush into my contour. This is just gonna mean that we're not gonna to have to switch brushes and we can also then use the brush in so many different ways as we go along. So just roll one side in and then you can start to buff this onto the face. So I'm feeling for the hollow of my cheekbones. I'm placing the brush right in there and I'm pushing upwards in an upwards motion, working into the hollow and then brushing up over the cheeks. And I'm also holding the brush in that well shape this time. So instead of the wall, we're going into the well. This is just going to give me a much more softer finish. And because I'm working in an angle, it creates that soft swooping motion for me. So I'm pushing upwards from the hollow up into the cheeks. And the great thing about this is that I can then use the flat side of the brush and go over this if I want to soften out any harsh lines or just make it a little bit more natural looking. Then for my forehead, what I do is I use a sweeping motion, either working upwards towards the hairline or downwards towards the brows. It's up to you which angle you want to use. You just wanna make sure that you're using the edge that you've applied bronzer to. Then for nose contour, you can just run the brush alongside the edge of the nose, or you can do what I did here, which is just create a little barrier right in the center. And again, the cool thing is we can just use the flat side of the brush to blend it out. Now you can also use this on the eyes if you just wanna create a little bit of framework, but if you want to, you can also check out my video on how to apply a full eye makeup look using just your fingertips too. And then we're just gonna use the opposite side of the brush to apply our highlighter. And I'm holding the brush in exactly the same way that we did before, an open, well pen position, applying this wherever you would typically like to apply your highlighter. I do the tops of my cheeks, a little bit on my nose, lips, and then Cool thing again is we can just use the flat side of the brush just to blend it out. Now the very last step is to pick up your blush and I'm actually going to use the flat side of the brush to do this, tapping it in in the woodpecker motion and then just applying blush wherever you typically like to apply blush. I like to go onto my cheekbones and then work upwards towards the top of my ear. 
So we've applied our foundation, concealer, powder, contour, highlight, and now blush. And then all you have to do is just give it a quick wash and it should be ready and dry by tomorrow. Always finish with blush, always, because you don't want your contour or your highlight getting pink. And then look how much movement. After all of the makeup that we've applied, see how the brush has so much movement? There's no clogging because we're using a little bit at a time and applying it onto our face, which means less damage to your brush, but also less product wastage on your brush. It's going on your face. That's the trick. I really hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let's for fun, let's do one of our emoji challenges. How about you guys just share in emoji form, something that makes you happy anything at all that just makes you happy because I'd love to know all of the things that make you happy. I already have an idea about what mine's going to be. And my next video might not be able to be voted on because I have been a little bit under weather. To be honest, I'm, I'm really surprised that I even got this video up because I have been having a lot of symptoms lately, unfortunately, but we're going to keep going and we're going to keep trying. And that's why I really want to see all the things that make you happy because they'll make me happy too. And we all just need a little bit extra happiness in our life sometimes. So as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. You are doing the best you can. And I cannot stress that enough. You are doing the best you can. And you should be really proud of that. Really proud because life's tough sometimes. And it's hard to give it your all when it feels like you're only running on like 10%. But your 10% is 100%. If, if that's all you can give and that's inspiring. So keep going, be proud of yourself, be kind to yourself, and I'll see you guys in a video really soon.